Welcome guys, George with Virtual Staging here. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain to you how you can uh, really nail the perspective match on the head in tricky images like this one. The, this image is really challenging uh, because of three things. The first thing is the way how you, these images work. The dead-on images like this one are always tricky because they're dead-on. The second thing is I assume, I don't know, but I assume the photographer did something digitally to make those verticals even more vertical to that image. Uh, that's um, obviously, as we can see. And the thing, the third thing is the planning of the, your image. Uh, I mean, the way how you set up your um, vanishing lines. As you can see, I've already dealt with this image. I've managed to uh, create the perspective match. There are three um, steps that you can go and deal with this. By the way, this tutorial is upon the request of Tom Migas. Uh, he posted this comment uh, a few days ago on our Facebook group. And basically he's saying that the image is something wrong or it's, it's, it's either going like way too awkward on the side or the image, it, it gives him like huge numbers, like in the, in the <laughs> 10, 15 meters or whatever. This is, um, why his perspective match is wrong here because he built his vanishing lines all on one plane so for example what if this part of the image is visually correct as it is but that part of the image is not then we're going to have wrapping and there, there is already awkwardness that this happens and as you can see these lines goes like that so the image the, the, the center of the image is somewhere here instead of being at the center of the, of the of the screen and that's because he built the green vanishing lines which is the y axis on entirely on the left hand side that's the first mistake the second mistake is uh it's it's not always a mistake but it might be in this case the the z axis is also on one uh, plane, which are these equally well distance, almost distant um, axis from the screen. So what if our image is not okay here, but is okay here? Again, we have a problem. And this is one of the main problems really with this uh, thing. Um, everything starts with how you manage the, fur, um, the really the, the main aspect of the image uh, with your vanishing lines. So let me show you. I'm going to open you know, 3ds Max. I've already opened you know, 3ds Max. I'm going to match the viewport here. And the next thing is, I'm going to go to the render uh, settings. I don't really need to set up any, any render because I'm not going to render this image at all. I, what I need is the output signs and I have to set up this um, as the image dimensions so the width is 7360 7360 and the height of the image 1912 yeah, then what is really 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 very important is to lock the image aspect if you don't do this and if you start changing those numbers you're, you're screwed so i'm gonna crunch down a little bit this because this is too overkill for 3ds max uh, in 3ds Max will produce the downscale image, which almost no loss of um, quality of the image, but it will take some time, as you can see. Oh gosh, now uh, it is okay now. It's loaded. So how do we deal with this? First, I'm gonna uh, load up the perspective match and I'll show you the vanishing lines. In a way, 3ds Max is guessing that the image is like these are the weak points on that image. You should follow that. Of, of course, it is not. It's not always the case. Sometimes 3ds Max is wrong here. But the second thing is that you have to visually nudge a little bit your ground plane. Uh, this can be here. Your ground plane can be really addressed here. And as you can see, the ground plane on this side falls in a line with these lines uh, from the hard floor. For ground of the image, it looks okay. And at the moment I start nudging this to the horizon, it gets really weird. So we have a um, few potential issues that we are dealing with. Probably this side, although it might look really okay, but this side might, might be 
like a little bit tilted towards this. So for example, if, if we look at this, uh, floor plan of this space, uh, like from the top, we might have, this is the, the main wall and this thing might be like that. And then we have these, these other walls here. This is really actually can be, it can be, but because this has been altered, we, we cannot really tell. The second thing is the image is really, uh, being digitally altered. And that's why 3ds Max is taking a hard guess. And sometimes it's, it's really hard to do this. Then well, I'm going to start dealing with this. So as I said, I'm going to visually, uh, set up my ground plane to be like what I think is going to be at the end, but let's see. So I'm going to use slowly these things do not go super hard. So this is one of the main things used to, um, opposite sides of the image always, and you have to test what's going to work for you because you don't know basically with these images, it's, it's, it's never that easy. It's never straightforward. So I'm going to notch first this, and I'm going to start doing this. So as you can see, I know it's a bit tedious, but this is the only way for some reason, probably I, I think maybe the, the, the three max uh, code or something is broken. Um, because if you start doing like the hard way, as you can see, the more I start moving, the more this ground plane will vanish. Basically it's called, it goes under the camera. You see, now it gets crazy. I suppose this is more or less what you see, I've almost lost it. You see. It's, it's, it's taking a hard guess here, what ha what has to be done. So you have to be really precise. So if you have a mouse, uh, with like presets where you can really slow down the movement of the mouse, this is the moment now we have to do it. And I think I've almost did it. As I can see, I'm not going to even bother with these lines because 3 Max already gets this, this like absolutely perfect. These I don't have to touch really. You see, they falls almost perfectly. It's almost very well organized. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to move this thing here. And I will guess that this is probably 240 or 200, let's say 245 centimeters, which is, uh, eight feet almost, or eight, eight feet something. Um, so I'm going to pick an anchor object. So something that, uh, I didn't probably explain previously or might have explained, I can't remember your <clears throat> origin point of the scene is where your gizmo is. So if I place my gizmo at the, at the corner of this box, and at the moment I pick this anchor object and I select my box, my origin scene will become, will go there. So now I can move the distance and everything will scale down from that point. And you see my scene is already locked in place. So everything falls in line. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this camera because I don't want to lose this, this, um, perspective I've already created. And I'm going to go, um, by I'm going to select the camera and I'm going to go here and I'll open the link info. Um, where, yeah, actually what, what happened? Where is this thing? Um, yeah, yeah. Trees Max was buggy. So I'm going to check all of these boxes and this, this should lock your camera. Now I can't really move my camera. My camera is locked in place. So I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to uh, remove this polygon here and I'm going to keep working with this object now in order to develop my scene. And as you can see, my scene is already very well developed. Uh, and it's actually working very, very well. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to select everything and I'll invert all, uh, normals because I want to, to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just, uh, using, uh, simple extrude operations to extrude the sides. Um, and I'm going to do this, uh, thing here. I'm going to, I'm going to assume that this is somewhere more or less there. Uh, okay. So. And this goes there. So I, you see it's something, so now everything is starts, I mean, it's getting into shape, but sometimes you have to nudge a little bit 
Of course, if I spend even more time in order to produce a better, so now I assume the verticals needs to be touched a little bit and that's okay. So what now uh, I, can, I can confirm what I just said that the image has been vertically, uh, it's like somebody altered the verticals of this image and the image is like more vertical here than here. And the center point of the image is like slightly shifted towards this instead of being here. That's why this is a bit tricky, but it's not really something super changing, like challenging. And the, the, the third thing is probably this wall, as you can confirm here, is slightly like um, tilted. It's like at an angle. Actually, what we can do in this case is I can select this and move it like that, but I don't want to do that because at the moment I start moving this, uh, what I will start having is this, uh, like alterations. This is, this is the vertical wall and this is like not vertical. That's the vertical wall. And I want everything to be super vertical in this case. So I'm not bothered really with this. <clears throat> what you can do in this case is you can select this and just, because this is the more important corner, uh, you can do that. And you can use actually this top point in order to fix this. You see, there's a huge perspective shift here. So that can be done uh, in a different ways. Sometimes the way I, how I do it, if I have time, I'm going to go back to the perspective match. I'm going to unlock the camera or I'm going to exit the camera. I'm going to go back to the perspective match. And because we already have this camera now has already the perspective, as you can see, you see, this is where the, the center of the image, what I've just confirmed here, this camera confirm, confirms it as well. So instead of the, the center point of the image being here, where the, this, the, um, the doors opening is basically this middle part of the door, the, uh, the middle frame, the center point of the image looks like somewhere here, which is like there. And this shows, again, confirms that the image has been digitally altered. That's why you have to find alternative ways to deal with this. And if I have time, I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to exit this camera. Now the camera my, has, my camera has already the perspective shift. So I can go back and return to the perspective much and keep changing. But keep in mind, now you have to be really careful because the moment I start moving these things, I just slightly touched it and it went bunkers. So this, this is like, it has to be done from the beginning. Then it's already too late. Um, so my, my advice is go and save your scenes at multiple levels before you do any major changes, then you can do it. But this is not really a big pain uh, right now because we can do, as I said, we can do some cheats and we can alter. But uh, the, the, the other thing is avoid cheating way too much because this will produce uh, skewed scenes. And sometimes you will have problems in nailing things. And for example, if you have to hang paintings here, let me, let me select this wall. And I'll show what I mean. If I have to select this wall, this wall is already like at an angle. So uh, this means if I have, uh, for example, to, to create a, a, a painting here, as you can see, the wall is not correct. So my painting has to be like tilted as well. So there is a vice versa. I mean, it's, there's a pros and cons in this, um, in dealing with these images, but in general, it's not really painful and painful. And the most important thing is that you have to consider how you're going to do this image, what you're going to do and how you're going to start with basically you have to do a couple of tests on that image in order to find the best perspective match. And over time, of course, you will find the golden ratio. You will know how to deal with every single type of image, but this happens with the experience or with knowledge, which, which you can learn by watching my channel. <laughs> Um, shameless plug. So I'm going to keep extruding these things. And as I said, I've confirmed the image is really <laughs> heavily, um, distorted, uh, and we can do this and we can keep building the scene. So I'm going to, um, yeah, I'll select, yeah, 
and I'll keep building that thing. And then what I need to do is I'm going to extrude these things and I'll lock these in place. Um, so I'll do that and this. So more or less, I've already uh, mostly built my scene. I don't usually put ceilings unless I have to change some lights or to add lights. But even if I have to do lights, for example, let's, let's pretend that here is another trick. I didn't plan this for this, uh, for this tutorial, but I'm going to include it anyway. If you have a lampshade, for example, here, and you have to change the lampshade, you don't have to change the entire ceiling. You can just, this is the lampshade. Let's pretend that there is a lampshade. And what you can do is go here, for example, uh, select a, a circle, create a slightly larger circle and put it over there, convert this circle to a poly, and then you can use this as a backplate to cast your shadows. And that's it. You don't have to deal with additional information around this. You can just use this thing. Um, yeah, this is a small little trick that you can use. So. Yeah, in short, this is how you deal with these things. Uh, because on this image, I was able to spend more time to test the theory better. As you can see, everything perfectly matches uh, the scene. And as you can see, these lines are exactly where they look to, to be on, on my second trial of the image. But really, they might have a tiny, tiny, tiny difference. And it's here. I know that difference is over there. And keep in mind where it is. And here, it's just, it's slightly forward and attached to this thing. But yeah, that's the way how this works. Okay, folks, till next time. Happy staging, guys.